Welcome to another um, video. This particular video we're going to be talking about the discrete time convolution example, but unlike the previous example, we're going to use, which used the graphical or intuitive uh, approach to it. This one we're going to use a mathematical approach and directly go for solving the problem. So let's see, let's see what happens and uh, how, how we could apply it. So first of all, we're going to do a convolution, and uh, it really doesn't matter which way we go, but let's, let's go with the standard way. So y of n, it's going to be equal to the, uh, uh, the convolution of x of n with h of n. And we know this is a shorthand for writing the summation, which describes how convolution works. Summation of k, uh, k going from minus infinity to infinity of x of k um, multiplied by h of n minus k. So, so far it's very similar. That's basically the definition of convolution as we are writing it. Now, all we have to do is we have to take x of n and write it as x of k, which is simply replace everywhere you see an n you replace it with k. That's simple enough. So, so for that, so y of n will be equal to, let's use a different color so it's a little easier to see, summation of k going from minus infinity to infinity, x of k, which is going to be basically 2 u uh, step response of k minus step response of k minus 10, and then that whole thing, so this is basically x of k, and now we need to do, so this was x of k, all we need to do now is figure out what is the h of n minus k, which basically says pick everywhere you see, everywhere in the h of n equation you see n minus k, just plug in, uh, anywhere you see n, replace it with n minus k, which basically says it's going to end up being 4, oops, so this is going to be n minus k, this is going to be n minus k, <coughs> so if you come back here and rewrite this, we will have 4 times um, u of n minus k minus 2 minus u of n minus k minus 5. So, so, so far it doesn't look like it's anything fancy. All we're doing is just replacing some param parameter with something new. So, here is our h of n minus k. So, let's, let's carry this forward, see how far can we go uh, with this scheme. So y of n, let's push it up just oops, push it up just a little bit more. So y of n, it's going to be basically a couple of summation. It's going to be this multiply all of this in one summation and this multiply by the rest of them in another summation. So two and four can get multiplied and we can just pull it right out. So it's going to be eight summation of k equal to minus infinity to infinity. And then it's going to be u of k, step response k, multiplied by um, u n minus k minus 2 minus u n minus k minus 5. So that's the first part. Then you can take the second term, which has got a negative, so it's going to be minus 8 summation of k going from minus infinity to infinity, um, u of k minus 16 multiplied by the same stuff, u of n minus k, let's make this a little smaller so I can get everything on one page, n minus k minus 2 and minus step response n minus k minus 5, 
and all of that in one bracket. All right, now let's take a look at what, what is there anything we can do that? Anything we can do to fix this? You bet. So if you look at this piece, you'll see that this piece is one, right? When k, when k is larger or equal to zero. That basically allows us to get rid of u of k and change the lower limit of that. Here is a little bit different, but it's very similar because what we could do, oh, that's a 10, that's a 16. I don't know how I ended up with, right? U of minus 10. Yeah, this is a 10, poorly written 10. So here, what's going to happen is that this thing is only 1 when k is larger or equal to 10, which basically says y of n is equal to 8 summation of k going from 0 to infinity of u of n minus k minus 2 minus u of n minus k minus 5. Okay? And then the other part is 8 summation of k equal to 10, because it's got to be larger or equal to 10, to, to infinity, and then we can get rid of u of k minus 10, and then n, oops, u step response of n minus k minus 2 minus step response n minus k minus 5, okay? Now, you can break this further, as you can see. We can keep going, and this can be simplified to eventually where you're going to get the exact same answer as the um, uh, graphical um, solution. So I can take it to the next step and say, okay, y of n, I can write it as 8 summation of k equal to 0 to infinity step response n minus k minus 2 minus 8 summation of k going from 0 to infinity of u of n minus k minus 5. Or, or actually, we can even keep it together if you want, but this, oops, keep touching the wrong things. Um, so let me go ahead and bring the note back. And Okay, so let's push that up a little bit so I don't rest my hand on this. And so so this, is, this is about as simple as you can get it, and you have to leave it here because depending on what the end value is, you will get different, different responses here. So in here, you will have minus 8 summation of k equal to 10 to infinity, u of n minus k minus 2, and... Uh, then this will be plus 8 summation of k going from 10 to infinity of u of n minus k minus 5. Now you can draw some conclusion in that, but I thought it would kind of be useful to look at a few n values. Let's say, let's say someone comes to you and asks you, what is y of 5? And you're trying to figure out, okay, what is, so this, this is basically his equation probably as simple as you pass this is as if you simplify it more than that it'll be kind of hard to figure out um, you know uh, write one equation that has all the information in it but let's let's say why is let's say y of 5 which basically tells you that the n is equal to 5 for this one right that's what it means when it says that that means that thing is going to be reduced to 8 summation of k equal to 0 to infinity of u of n is 5 and minus 2, so it's going to be minus k plus 3 for the first one. And then the second one is going to be minus 8 summation of k from 0 to infinity of u of n, right? Uh, u of k, sorry, u of k, or u of minus k, actually u of minus k, because n is equal to 5 for this one. And then here, when n is equal to 5, is 8 summation of k equal to 10 to infinity, but uh, u 
of minus k minus uh, plus 3, okay? And then plus 8 summation of k equal to 10 to infinity, uh, u of n. Ah, keep saying n. n is equal to 5. So plug the n in there, and you'll end up with minus k. So in this case, if you look at this thing, let's start with the easy one. k is equal to 10. And in order for this to be 1, k has, this what's inside has to be larger or equal to 0. It can never going to be, so this is going to be 0. That goes out of the way. This one, k is 10, which means this, is, this will never be non-zero as well, so the whole thing goes to 0. You come here, you have the same issue. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> you don't have the same issue. It goes from 0 to infinity, which means... The only time u of k is equal to 1 is when k is equal to 0 because all the other time is negative and it's not going to work. Okay, So this is just simply going to be minus 8, this piece. And then we are left with this piece. So if this piece is, what is going to happen? This piece is going to be, if you look at it, k 0, sure enough, is larger than k, k, k equal to 1 is larger than, inside is larger than 0 and k equal to 2. So, so you're going to have 8 once for k0, once for k1, once for k2, once for k3, and after that is gone. So it's going to be 8 times 4, right? For k0, k1, k2, k3, k4, this is going to be minus 4 plus 1, which is negative. So it's going to be a 0 after that. So there's only three places. So all we're ending up with is basically 32 minus 8, so y of 5 is 32. And, I'm sorry, 24. And if you go back and look at the graphical solution, you will see this, this equation actually has all the information you had graphically. The only difference is this is a little harder to see what function is doing, and, and, but if you plug it into the computer, of course, it's going to plot all the y of n's for you. So, so the moral of the story is the graphical or the intuitive solution is really great when you are trying to figure out what the function looks like uh, as you're working through it. This is this mathematical or, or, or mathematical or analytical approach is great if I just want to plug it into a computer and let the computer draw uh, the function. And of course, as you can see, I really don't have to make any judgments on this one. I just plug the functions in and then try to simplify the equation using my math skills, okay? So, so this, in this case, we are wrapping up the discrete time uh, mathematical approach to convolute, convoluting a function with the impulse response.